What's going on, y'all? Today we'll be learning how to play Not Alone. So, in the game Not Alone, uh, it's been, it is the 25th century, and it's been years since humanity has had to flee to the stars, and you're looking for other intelligent life on other planets. So far, you haven't found anything, uh, until you come across some, uh, files from old Earth, and, um, it shows the name of a planet called Artemia, which was a Class M planet full of fauna and flora. But other than that, there's nothing else. The, uh, the records have been wiped clean. So you and your team travel to this planet, and uh, upon arriving there, this magnetic force disrupts the ship's systems and sends your ship crashing down into this planet. The captain sending out an SOS for you to evacuate, and you get out safely and unharmed, but in the distance you hear the captain screaming for help, and you rush over there, and when you're over there helping him, you see something out of the corner of your eye just rush past you, and you figure out you are not alone. So let me show you how to set this game up, and then we'll dive back over here, and I'll show you how to play. So this is how you're going to set the game up. You're going to have the creature area, the creature cards and tokens. So the creature area consists of the 10 location cards uh, which make up the planet. Then you're going to have the creature victory area and rescuer victory area so the rescuers are blue creature is purple then you're going to have the player areas consisting of uh five place cards place cards are also locations then you have three will i'll explain will here in a moment they each start with one survival card Along with the place cards in the player's hands, you're going to have a row of uh, five other place cards. And depending on the number of hunted there are, you're going to put that many place cards of each number down. So if you have two hunted, you're going to start with uh, two of each number six, two of each number seven, two of each number eight, two of each number nine, two of each number ten. So this is the amount of extra place cards you would place for uh, hunted ranging from two or three. Uh, anything, uh, if it's hunted from four or six, you would have three number six, three number seven, three number eight, three number nine, and three number ten. So let's go ahead and take this back to the table and I'll show you all how to play. So the way you play this game is going to be in four phases. The first phase, uh, the hunted are going to choose a location and hide out and try not be discovered by the creature. The second phase, the creature is going to take his tokens and hunt cards. And try to hinder the progression of the hunted. The Third phase is going to be a reveal, so the hunted are going to reveal the location of which they're hiding, and the creature is going to find out if he was able to catch any of the hunted or not. Phase four is going to be a cleanup phase, where you're going to take the car the locations that were chosen, discard them, take the tokens off of the locations that the creature chose, and put them back over here. The hunter is going to draw back up to three cards. And you will check for end of game winning conditions. So the creature wins if their token gets to the uh, the star of victory first, meaning they have assimilated all of the hunted and they have been stranded on the planet forever. The hunted win if they get to the victory star first, meaning they have successfully completed a rescue mission off of the planet and are safely returning to their original planet. 
So before we move on to phase one, let me go ahead and explain cards to you. We have the place cards, which are basically the locations which the uh, the hunted have already explored and found. So we have uh, four locations. And then the fifth card, the rover, is going to be their method of transportation around the planet trying to find other areas to explore. Then we have survivor cards. Survivor cards are uh, abilities or things that help the hunted in their journeys uh, to help them win or uh, avoid damage and things like that. Then we have the hunt cards. The hunt cards are the creatures cards that they use to hinder the progress of the hunted. Now, uh, when you start the game, the each hunted playing gets one survivor card. And the hunter starts off with a hand of three hunted cards. And then, of course, you have the place cards numbered from one to five. Each hunted will get one of those as well. And now let's go ahead and go into phase one, uh, exploration. So what exploration is, phase one, is basically the hunted are going to choose a location to hide in from the creature. And so they choose a location they want to hide in, and also they want to try and use that location's abilities. Uh, so we have, you know, different abilities on each of the cards. The rover, you can uh, take one place card you do not own and add it to your hand. So that would be the reserve right here. You would take, uh, if you were able to use the ability, you would take one of those cards and put it in your hand. And then we have, uh, we also have the river. So the next turn, play two place cards before revealing, choose one and return the second to your hand. So if you were able to use that ability, you would, on your next turn, play two place cards, and what happens is, uh, before revealing, you choose one and return the second to your hand. So what that means is, like, say the creature, you know, caught you on one of your cards, and you saw that, so you're like, okay, well, I'm going to reveal this one, which the creature isn't on. So that's some, some examples of the location uh, place cards. So we're going to go ahead and go into phase one, which is exploration. And what happens is every player will choose one card and they'll place it face down. And then the creature's turn will happen. So what's going to happen on the creature's turn is you're going to at least place the creature token uh, you're going to place it on a location where you think the hunted might be hiding. So we're going to go ahead and just place this there. Now the other two tokens, you have the target token and the Artemia token. Now what the target token is, is usually played by uh, using a card that has that symbol on it. So if you look here at the clone, it has the target symbol on it. So if you play the clone card, you would be able to place this target on one of these location cards. So what happens is when they uh, are on a space with the target token, they are subject to the effects of what the card with that symbol has on it. And then after they resolve that, they may use the location's ability or they can take one of their cards from the discard pile back into their hand. And then we have the Artemia token. So the way you play this is also going to be on cards. The Artemia symbol. Or it'll be on the player boards. So the way you use it on the player board is if the victory token of the hunted land on one of the spaces where the Artemia token is, then you also get to use the Artemia token. What that does is, uh, if they land on a place with the Artemia token, then they have to discard an extra card from their hand, besides the one they've already played, 
and also um, the power of that location cannot be used. So let's continue with phase two, the creature turn. So I have placed my creature token on the one of the locations where I think the hunted might be. And I'm gonna go ahead and play the clone card. Consider the target token as a second creature token. So I will take the target token and I'll place it on another number. There. And then we'll continue to phase three. Phase three is the reveal of the locations and also whether or not the creature caught any of the hunted. So we'll go ahead and do phase three right now. So we reveal the place tokens. So we see that the players have chosen number two and number three. So we'll go ahead and solve number three first. So since the creature chose the place of where one of the hunted were hiding, so one, they do not get to use that ability of the location they're on. And the second thing is, since they were caught, they lose one will. Now let me explain a little bit more about will before we continue. Uh, before you start your turn, before you place your cards, you are able to uh, resist or give up. So what resist means is, so say you had, uh, so you had three cards in your discard pile, and if you were to resist and give up, you could give up one or two will tokens. So it, for every one token, you gain back two cards from your discard. If you were to resist and give up two will tokens, and uh, that one of those was your last will token, then the assimilation token, the creature's token, would move forward one space. So that is resisting. Uh, you can also give up. So what giving up is, uh, you would essentially give up all your will tokens and you would be able to get all your cards in your discard back. But again, the uh, assimilation token, creature token will move forward one space. You wanna be careful in managing your will so that way you don't give up and essentially have the creature win quicker. So getting back to phase three, uh, the reveal of the tokens. So, I will put this back. This one. So the creature had caught one of the hunted. So we'll go ahead and move this forward once. The hunted loses one of their willpower. And if at any time they were to lose three willpower uh, when the creature caught them, then the assimilation token, creature token, would move forward again. And then, so we saw that one. So let's go ahead and look at the next player. So player, the second player played this. It is place card number two, location the jungle. Take back to your hand this place card and one place card from your discard pile. So they would get to use this ability, but since they don't have any cards in their discard pile, they do get to get they do get to take this card back. If they had cards in their discard pile, they would also get to take back one card from their discard pile. So they'll take that card back, and then we solve the target token. So again, consider the target token as a second creature token. So this was on location number one, the lair. Nobody was there, so the token doesn't do anything. Now, phase four is the cleanup phase. So you take all the tokens, you put them back on the creature side, and players take their place cards and discard them face up. Also, uh, at the end of phase four, the rescue token, hunted token, will move forward one space. Before I go, I wanted to give you some additional info on the cards. So on the lair card, which is place card number one, location card, the lair. It says, take back to your hand the place cards from your discard pile or copy the power of the place with the creature token. So uh, you would not take the lair card back when you play it because technically it's not 
uh, in your discard pile until phase four. So when you play this, you play this in phase one and it's revealed in phase three and it's still not in your discard pile. It also says uh, you can copy the power of the place with the creature token. So uh, with that in mind, you can't copy the artifact. Even though the layer says copy the power of the place with the creature token, the artifact cannot be copied. And then we have the beach cards and the red cards. So number four and number eight location cards. Uh, so the rec says move the rescue counter forward one space, which is this right here. Um, and the beach says place the marker counter on the beach or remove it to move the rescue counter forward. Uh, but those, they can only be used once per turn. Uh, so if multiple people played location card number four, the beach, they cannot all use it. The same thing with the wreck, number eight. Another thing I wanna tell you about the artifact card, next turn, play two place cards, revol resolve both places. So uh, you'll resolve both of them, but you'll still have to account for the creature and their to the creature's tokens. So if any of the tokens would cancel out the ability, then you can't use it. The other thing is, uh, if you have the river and the artifact card and you wanna play them both, so because the artifact says play two place cards and the river says next turn play two place cards, uh, you would actually you would actually be only able to play one of those. Um, the way that this can happen is if you get the survivor card, uh, take back the place card you just played. So if you were to play the uh, artifact and then you were able to get it back with this card, uh, you would not be able to play the artifact and the river in the next turn. The other uh, cards I'd like to explain are the shelter and the source. So cards seven and nine. So they both say, uh, well, one of them says, draw two survival cards, choose one and discard the second. The other one, the source, the hundred of your choice, you or another player regains one will or you draw a survival card. So in using these cards, if the survival deck was to ever run out, uh, all you're gonna do is take it and reshuffle it uh, because you're gonna be using survival cards and discarding them. And then, so if it ever runs out, just take it up and all you do is reshuffle it. If you enjoyed watching this video, click that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. I'll be posting more videos soon. Comment down below. Tell me what you thought of the video. Thanks for watching The Other Board Gamer.